If you're a new dad, you're probably really anxious and really nervous, just like I was when I was in your position. Here are 10 things that I wish a fellow dad would have told me when I was in your position, and each of them build on each other, so by the time you get to the end, you're going to have a dad superpower to be able to move forward with that new baby. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Number one, your sex life, it's gonna change. Sorry to put it that way. I'm sorry to bring it up right off the bat, but let's just get it out of the way. Yo, man. What are you doing? Get it out the way. Sex life after kids is different. You've probably heard about it before, and it is a reality. It's kind of the before, during, and after component of this entire project, right? Before, they don't call it making babies for nothing. That's the fun part, right? Especially if this is something you were planning for, you gotta work at it, and that is the fun part for us dads. During, it kind of can be hit or miss. I've heard of some dads where it is a very fun nine months and things are happening rapid fire, so to speak. But I've also heard of some dads where things have dropped off considerably or completely. So something to expect. It could be great, it could be nothing at all, but your wife is going through some pretty significant hormonal changes and that's going to be one of the byproducts. After baby comes, sex could be also different as well for you and I would plan on that. Whether or not she is very into it or whether she is not, again, will be dependent on the person, but those hormones that are flowing through your wife's body will make things quite a bit different and sometimes challenging. So something to think about and keep in mind and have an appreciation for the challenges that she is going through from a hormonal basis as you are moving forward into baby life. Number two, watch some birth videos. Be prepared for everything. Now, if you've never seen a live birth before in person, it's going to be something that is very unique and very different for you. I would get online and I would find some actual birth videos and watch that in action because there are some crazy things that you're gonna see. You're going to have a lot of challenges when you get into that nursery area where you're gonna have that baby. First of all, you're not gonna sleep. You're typically going to have to be there anywhere between 48, 72, or even longer. So you wanna make sure that you are prepared and bring that good pillow so you can sleep on that really uncomfortable bed. Things stretch in ways you would not believe. So be prepared as that baby's coming out of the birth canal to know that that's going to happen and know that it is absolutely normal. Um, there's also a lot of things that could happen while the baby's coming out. There's a lot of things that are pushing out of that area. So be prepared for a little bit of sh But nurses, they're pretty good at hiding it. So keep that in mind as well. Your baby might look like an alien when they come out. They're going to have a pointed head. They're going to be blue. They're going to look a little bit weird and that is completely normal. So definitely something to keep in mind. They will pink up and they will get super cute as soon as they're dried off and as soon as they are with mommy having their first nursing session. And then finally, as soon as that baby comes out there's something coming after that it's called the afterbirth or when the placenta itself is delivered out this is very bloody there is the um, umbilical cord there's a lot of things that come out that you want to be careful of and be aware of so you're not surprised by that after the fact your nurses are fantastic about coaching you through all these things but if you're prepared and you've seen it ahead of time you'll be much better off number three take paternity leave every second of it. If you're in a job where you are allowed paternity leave or offered it, I highly and humbly recommend that you take every single second that you are owed from your job and from the work that you do. Whether it's two weeks, whether it's 12 weeks or even longer, take all that time or break it up throughout the year, but don't leave it on the table. This is going to help you and your wife and your new family three ways. The first, you'll be able to help your wife out in all of the things that she's going to need doing around the house that uh, she simply can't do now that she has that baby. The second thing is you will be able to bond with your new baby so much better by the sheer virtue of the fact that you are there, you're not thinking about work, and you have the ability to sit and just enjoy those baby snuggles any and all times of the day. And then third, you'll actually have the opportunity to get some things done around the house. Have you had some projects that you've been wanting to get done? After those first two weeks or so, you will have the opportunity to dig into some of those projects and really get things moving and moving forward so that when you go back to work, they're not resting on your shoulders and something that you think you might want to do. How rude of me, I didn't even introduce myself. My name is Ryan Field Spack. I am a former captain and paramedic with a large metropolitan fire department and 
I have spent the last 24 years of my life trying to improve upon my response to chaotic incidents and be able to manage those incidents in a calm, cohesive, poised manner. And the biggest significant complex incident that I have ever been a part of is kids and child raising. I've got three kids right now, all under the age of eight, and I go through the gamut of the challenges with my wife every single day. I really wish somebody would have been able to coach me through some of these challenges moving forward when I was in that position of a first new kid. So here I am doing it for the rest of us and I hope that you enjoy this. And if you feel like I've earned your subscription at the end of this video, I would appreciate you doing so. Let's move on to number four, diapers. Here's the thing guys, you just gotta man up and you gotta do it. Diapers can be really scary. I'm gonna have tutorials on how you can change diapers like a man, but this is just one of those things. If you want to be helpful around the house and you wanna help your wife out, do some diaper changing. It's not that hard. Here are some basic tips and some basic things to keep in mind, two of them in particular for this short video. The first, if you got boys, stay out of the line of fire. As soon as you open up that diaper, everything and all that cool air comes into the fray and they immediately start peeing all over the place. If that thing is poking toward your face, you can expect to be wet. So take that, point it down, point it out of the line of fire and get that changing done nice and fast. And the second, newborn baby poop, it actually doesn't stink much. There's not much in that poop that is causing too much of a stink. They're not eating crazy weird things. So enjoy the fact that before they start eating real human food and they're just nursing or having bottle feeding, it's not gonna stink that bad. So you can get through it, get that wipe done, move on with your day and become a pro at that so you can help out your wife. Number five, pacifiers are your friend. When I first had my first kiddo, I always thought, oh, I don't wanna get pacifiers in too early because I don't want them to be um, sucked into it, so to speak, and I don't want them to be using it as a clutch. My thing that I found out is the pacifiers really help to take the edge off of those kiddos so that they could relax a little bit more. So if you feel like it's something that works for you, Introduce that pacifier early and often. There's easy ways to remove the pacifier when they get older. I've got content about that coming, but you can definitely think about pacifier when your baby's agitated, get that in, get that early and often, and try different ones because there are all kinds of different tips that kids like, and you can definitely try and find one that they will absolutely calm down with. And that brings to a bonus tip when you talk about pacifiers being your friend, is helping your kids calm down when they're crying. One thing that I used to do all the time, when the baby's in the womb, it's really loud, like really loud, uh, vacuum cleaner loud. So if you're holding the kiddo in the middle of the night, you're trying to get them to calm down, if you shh in their ears really loudly while bouncing them up and down, it feels just like they're back in the womb, that'll calm them down, add a pacifier to it, you're golden. You know, when my wife and I were getting ready to have our first kid back in 2016, I had already delivered five babies in the field, either in a house or in an ambulance on the way to the hospital. So I kind of figured I had a really good thought process about how this whole baby thing was gonna work. Boy, was I surprised. All I wanted back then was a two month blueprint, a survival guide so that I could be able to do some of these things right and feel more comfortable in the process. So if that's something that might be beneficial to you and you definitely want, check the link in the description below. You can have a completely free two month new dad survival guide. I've got it in there for you. It's got all the information you need to be able to hit the ground running and launch with that new baby. So anyway, check that out down below in the description if that's something you're interested in. Now on to number six. My absolute secret weapon when it came to helping my kiddo to go to sleep was swaddling. Swaddling is one of those things that some people decide not to do, some people think it's a little too um, out there, but for me personally, I would swaddle my kiddos so tightly in the middle of the night that they had no choice but to go to sleep. I've got a video that talks specifically about how to swaddle, but essentially what happens is your babies are flailing around all the time and they're hitting themselves in the face, they're waking themselves up, but if you get a nice muslin cloth swaddle, it holds their arms straight down, it keeps them nice and constricted, and then they will be confident and more comfortable and sleeping better. So when you're swaddling and you get that nice and tight, you can do it a lot tighter than you would think that will give them the confidence and the calmness with that pacifier to get them to go to sleep better so learn that swaddle and you'll be much better off for the night moving forward number seven 
engage your core. I'm not talking about working out. That's another content piece altogether. But when you are holding that baby and you will be holding that baby a lot, it's easy to just let your middle core completely relax. And then essentially what you're doing is you're holding your baby and you're leaning back for hours at a time. That, at least for me, for two of my kiddos, absolutely killed my back and I was in extreme pain for about a month after the fact simply because I was not engaging my core while holding that kiddo. If you do that, if you focus on engaging that core, your back's not going to hurt anymore. I can guarantee it. Something to definitely think about. Number eight, dad, one of the things that your wife absolutely will be doing all the time, if she's able, is nursing. Nursing is huge, it's so darn important. It helps to mom and baby to bond together. The nutrients that come out of that nursing milk is absolutely fantastic, but mom can't necessarily nurse all the time, especially in the middle of the night. So one thing that I would absolutely suggest you do is help out with feeding. Get out there and find a really good bottle that your kid will take. There's tons of bottles out there. I'll leave some links in the description below that might be good options for you. But if you can help your wife with either pumped milk or formula that's being supplemented, absolutely do so. Typically in the nighttime, my wife would pump. She'd have a ton of extra milk laid over and I would have everything set up downstairs. So I would have a basin with uh, the ability to fill some hot water. I'd pull something out of the freezer as soon as the kiddo started crying. I would place that in the hot water, get it all nice and warm, put it in that um, bottle, and then I would feed the kiddo in the middle of the night. So at least take one of the many feeds in the middle of the night off of my wife. So that obviously, of course, helped my wife to sleep a little bit more and longer, but there's something about the bonding that you get with your little boy or your little girl in the middle of the night while they're feeding that will really forever improve your relationship with your kiddo. So I couldn't highly recommend it more. Get in there, do some bottle feeding during the middle of the night especially, and it will absolutely be well worth it for you. Number nine, after you've done that bottle feeding, you gotta help out with some burping. And burping is an art, and it's something that's so darn important. If you think about it, when your kiddo's taking a lot of that milk, they're swallowing a lot of air, so they're getting that air in their belly. That's gonna cause a couple of things. It's gonna cause spit-ups, a lot of spit-up, and it's also gonna cause a lot of discomfort. So if you can get in there and do some really good burping, that's gonna be huge. The best thing to do first is to get a burp cloth. Put that over your shoulder, whichever shoulder is your favorite. Get that burp cloth there so when that spit up does inevitably come. By the way, the spit up, it's not that bad. Doesn't stink, not too slimy, cleans up pretty well. Plus it's your own baby, so not too big a deal, right? But when you're doing that burping, make sure to get them nice and supported. You might have to support their head if they're little, little, and then give them some really good, actually pretty hard taps. It should sound like you're beating on a drum on their back hard enough to where it's actually getting those bubbles to start floating up so they can burp them out. So don't feel like you need to be easy on the kiddo. Give them a good hard tap for at least four or five minutes and that will get that burp out and will make everybody much better. Number 10, wearing your baby is amazing. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is get out of the house a little bit. If you can take a trip to Home Depot, to Lowe's, if you wanna take a trip and just go walk around, get your baby, get an ergo, get some of the different ways to carry your kiddo around and you will have the opportunity to bond with that baby and get out of the house, which is going to be absolutely important. Getting out of the house is huge. Do some shopping. It will help you to get into the flow of what it's like outside in the real daylight and the real um, environment, which you've been locked away from for a week or two. But the really cool thing about carrying that baby around is you get instant street cred from everybody that you walk by. Whether it's other guys, dads, or other moms, you will be absolutely amazed at how many times people will look at you and say, nice job, dad. There aren't that many dads out there that will take their kids out on their own and flaunt the fact that they got a baby in an ergo on their belly. It's pretty darn cool and you will get street cred all day long, so definitely give it a shot. And then finally, bonding with that kiddo. If you take them out and they are set 
on you in an ergo, and even if they're old enough where they're facing out, you could have all kinds of fun showing them the cool dad things about the world and teaching them the little things they need to start knowing, even at this early young age. So get out there, carry your kiddo, and enjoy that bonding time. And we got a bonus for you. The bonus specifically for this one is your baby is not fragile. Now there's a lot of things, especially as a new dad, you may think, oh my gosh, I can't touch, I can't hold, I can't manipulate this baby because it's just gonna break. That's not the case. These kiddos are robust. They have the ability to bounce back. Don't drop them, but they do bounce back, right? You can help and um, hold and manipulate those kiddos pretty well. The one thing I would say is just to be careful about how you pick them up. If they're laying on their back, don't pick them up without supporting their head because their neck isn't too strong. But they're doing tummy time all the time. So you can hold them on their belly and walk around with them all the time. Babies are extremely resilient, they're not fragile. Enjoy getting out there and holding that kiddo and having fun. So those are my 10 tips for new dads to get out there and seize the day. What tips did I miss? Are you a dad, you're watching this, you think, oh, you totally missed this one. Put that in the comments below. Let's have this dad community teach and learn from each other. There's lots more dad content coming up. Check the link in the description below. Appreciate you coming. I'll see you next time.